So hi everybody, thank you for joining us. So today we have Sarah, who was uh, a class alumni class of 2019, I believe, uh, or 2018. 18. Uh, so I've been saying that wrong then. Uh, so Sarah is here to share her experience studying at Loughborough and she is currently doing her placement at UCL Hospital. So she's gonna share uh, her experience of studying uh, at the university and things that you should consider when you are thinking about which university to attend. And then we also have Charlotte here uh, who works at the University of Lampa. So then she, uh, if you have any admissions related questions or things that you want to ask uh, an admissions representative, she will be able to help answer any questions that you have. So Sarah, this, the floor is all yours. Cool, thank you, Ms. Chaza. Um, hi everyone. So we have a little presentation that we're going to present. Um, I think Charlotte's going to start and then um, we'll go from there. Yeah, so um, I, I'll share my screen. We popped together a presentation because it's a, a smaller group. I think it would be nice if you're um, happy to talk to us, um, but I will pop the presentation on, give you a quick introduction, and then I'll let you let Sarah speak to you for most of it. So if I just go through. Um, so this is what we plan to talk to you about. Um, my name's Charlotte. I work in the international office at Loughborough um, and I've done this for six years. So my role is to support any students considering applying to the UK, particularly to Loughborough, um, making sure you've got all the information you need and making your life as easy as possible, helping at applications, etc. Um, so yeah, I look after students from Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei and Hong Kong. Um, but I started at Loughborough as a student back in 2011. Um, I moved to Loughborough to study history and geography and I loved it too much to leave when I graduated. So I applied for my job and I'm still here, still live in Loughborough. Um, I bought my house here last year. It's a really lovely place to live. Um, Loughborough's well and truly got me. I am part of the furniture now. Um, and then I'll let Sarah introduce herself a little bit more later. She's got some slides. Um, so when we want, we want to focus on is student experience and why you should consider that aspect when you're looking at different universities. Um, I think there's a lot of focus on what course you're going to study, um, what you might do when you graduate, the kind of serious side, but university is a lot more than just choosing an academic course or choosing a subject area because it's choosing your whole life. Um, so I want you to start thinking, if you haven't already, about what your university experience will look like. Where are you going to be living? And what are you going to be doing? And the biggest thing that we want to kind of think about today is that your experience will be unique. So whether you all end up coming to Loughborough and we all end up doing similar courses, it would still be very different. My experience at Loughborough will naturally have been different to Sarah's because we get involved in different things. We study different programs um, and it's very much got to be what is right for you. There are lots of reasons to go to university. Obviously, the learning and the academic is the one that your parents will talk to you most about. But also university is a time for personal growth, developing yourself, trying something new, meeting lots of new people, hopefully meeting your friends for life. My best friends now are still the people that I met when I moved into university on the first day and they had the rooms around me in halls. Um, we all live in different parts of the UK, different parts of the world. Actually, my friends just moved to San Diego, but they're still my best friends. Um, and a lot more of my friends are people that I met through university. And when I started back in 2011, I was shy. I wasn't particularly, I was quite academic, but I wasn't particularly sociable. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do for a career when I graduated. And three years later, I got a job where my whole whole life is talking to people, networking, public speaking. And I, it was the time at university that helped me get there. But most importantly, you're going to hopefully have the best three, four, five years of your life. But your time at university will depend on whether you choose, or so of course you choose, whether it's classroom or lab based. So the differences between studying history and engineering, for example, and why you chose that course, what you're looking to get out of it. Do you want a course that's gonna help you enter into a career? So an engineering course that is specifically focused on aeronautical engineering, for example, accredited by the right engineering bodies, links with the best companies that's gonna send you straight into a job. 
Or are you doing a course like history and geography, something flexible, something that you can choose modules in, maybe a liberal arts course where you're just getting a degree and you're looking to build on that as you go through university. And each university teaches differently as well. Where you go to university will make a huge difference if you're a campus or a city, a big university, a small college, where it is in the world, in the UK, and also what you do extracurricularly. So what your sports, if you do sports, arts, hobbies, social life, anything like that as well. And there are lots of things for you to consider when you're looking at what's most important for you. We have a pyramid on the screen. I'm not going to make you do this. Um, sometimes I do make students have a think, um, but there are lots of things that you want to consider about what's most important for you. What are you not willing to be flexible on? Is the course the most important thing for you? Or do you just like a subject area? When I was applying, I knew that I liked social sciences and humanities. I was doing history, politics and geography as my A-levels, but I wasn't set on doing history and geography as my degree. In fact, I applied for history and geography at Loughborough and I applied for anthropology at Lancaster and history and politics at Exeter. So slightly different courses depending on the university that I was looking at, but because I wanted to go for that sort of subject area, whereas a lot of people would go for one subject and that would be the most important thing for them. Why you study it, if it's your best subject, your favorite subject, because it will lead you somewhere. You'll also have a look at the accommodation, where you live, how the, talk, the course is taught. Is it a high contact time university where you're going to be in lectures for a lot of the time? Is it a big university where there might be 400 students in each lecture? Or is it more a bit like more like school where you've got a lot of smaller class sizes? Um, some universities and colleges in the UK have less than a thousand students who are going somewhere really specialist compared to some universities that have over 50,000 students. Also have a look at what extracurricular placement opportunities are involved. Sarah's gonna to talk to you a bit about her placement, I think. Um, and the graduate employability, how the university is gonna help you afterwards. And also, yeah, where it is in the UK. But remember, even if you've decided that you want to do history at one university or physics or psychology, different universities will teach that same course differently. They design their own programs. So you need to look at the modules, the course content, the support available, the facilities, is it hands-on? Is it more classroom based? What are the facilities available, particularly if you're doing an arts or a lab-based course? How is it assessed? If you hate exams, maybe you can find a university that doesn't have as much exam content. For me, I actually really like exams and I hate coursework because I'm not particularly organized in starting coursework at the beginning of the term. I was every teacher's nightmare for that. Um, so for me, I didn't mind doing exams. Also have a think about where you're going, particularly if you are unfamiliar with the UK. You might just think, oh, move to the UK, same sort of place. Actually, it's pretty different wherever you go um, from the accent and the dialect, um, from the north to the south, how people speak, uh, to the cost of living across the country. If you're living in a town or a city, living in London, living in one of the big cities in the south of the UK is astronomically expensive compared to a town in the Midlands or the north. If you want to get around, how easy is it to get from places, to get from Malaysia, what would be your travel route? How do students travel around? This was a really big one for me. Um, what sort of university are you going to? In the UK, we have campus universities like Loughborough. We're one of the biggest campus universities in the UK. Everything's on one site. It's kind of like a little university bubble town. Some campuses are huge. Our campus is absolutely massive. It takes about half an hour to walk from one end to the other. Whereas some campuses are really small, um, but they might be a campus within a city or your university might be dotted around a city. So you might live on one side, study on another, have your sports equipment on the other side, but you're living a city life. Um, and that's something that only you can know which one you want to go for. For me, definitely campus. I love the student experience that it offered. For my best friend at school, she went to London, lived a London life, very different experience. We both absolutely loved it. And also look, 
if you have anything that's particularly important to you, what that university offers facilities wise. If you're particularly into drama and you want to do either drama as your course or drama extra curricularly, do they have a theatre? Can they support you with that? If you're sporty and you play a sport, do they have netball courts or an athletics track or whatever it is? Um, Loughborough is very, very famous for sport. And on our campus, we have some of the best sports facilities in the world. And I don't know if any of you have heard of Tom Daly, who was the British Olympic diver. Um, he was very famous. He was a teenager when he was in the Olympics. He was brilliant. And they interviewed him when he was coming up to 18 and said, well, what's your plan? And where are you going to go? And he said, I think I'll go to university. I'm going to go to Loughborough because it's the best sports university. And our PR team were like, great, this is amazing. Except we don't have any diving boards. So you can't dive at Loughborough. And he hadn't, hadn't thought about that. Although we're very sporty and we've got um, a world standard athletics track, we've got the biggest gym in Western Europe. We've got all sorts of different things. We've got a football stadium, no diving boards. So possibly not right for him because of that. It's a lot of reasons to think about London or not London. Um, a lot of students when they think of the UK want to live in London. London is an amazing place. I love it, but I would never want to live there. It's so expensive. Um, it's a very different experience, particularly as a student. I didn't, I chose not to go to London from my university experience. It's very expensive, much more independent style, whereas I knew I needed the support of a campus base. My plan actually was probably to move to London for my graduate job when I graduated. Didn't know what that was going to be. Um, it never ended up happening. I did get offered a job in London and I weighed out the pros and cons and thought, actually, London's not for me. I'm not a city person. Um, I much prefer living in Loughborough and campus in a town. Um, but I know lots of my friends that have lived in London and loved it. And also make sure you look at accommodation when you're looking at universities. Where will you be living? Both physically, where is it? Is it on campus, off campus? Is it close to where you're going to be taught, where you need to be? Or do you need to take public transport? At Loughborough, the accommodation was one of the reasons that I chose it. It was on campus, it was guaranteed for at least two years. It was cheap, we had lots of options. Whereas my the university I was choosing between, in the second year, you end up moving to a different town. So you have about a half hour commute on public transport to get back to campus. And for me, I'm not a morning person. You can probably tell by looking at me now. I'm still not particularly awake. Mornings aren't my strong point. That was never going to work for me. Um, so ask the universities where you're going to be living. Speak to students who live there. Look at tours of the accommodation. Is it guaranteed? Will they make sure that you're supported? Is there enough accommodation in that university town or city? Not always. So look, do a bit of research about that. Do you want to be catered or self-catered? Are you happy to share a bathroom or do you want your own ensuite? Where would you do your laundry? What facilities are the common rooms? Do you get social spaces in your accommodation? And that is particularly important at the moment when we're in a period of lockdown, uncertainty, self-isolation. If you're gonna be stuck in one flat or one house, probably want it to be quite nice um, and have a lot more space. My advice on accommodation has changed this year. I often used to say, go for the cheapest. You spend your money elsewhere, go traveling. Now, when you can't do that, maybe it's worth spending a little bit more on getting a nicer room that's got a bigger social space. Up to you. How many people do you share with as well? Um, at Loughborough, some of our accommodation are houses that have kind of house areas or flats that have four students. In my hall, in my flat, there were 13 of us that shared bathroom and kitchen facilities. And at times it was chaos, but I wouldn't have changed it for the world. It was absolutely amazing. And unlike anything I'll ever do again. Um, but yeah, your student experience is all aspects of your university life. It's how you study, it's how you're taught, it's how you engage with the academic discipline that you're studying. It's how you develop yourself professionally, um, your skills development, everything from the soft skills that you might be looking at for your personal statement, like public speaking, confidence, teamwork, leadership, 
through to your professional skills and development. And then it's the social skills. It's what you can do that you do extracurricularly because you like to. And it's what you can do that is just for fun. We have at Loughborough a skydiving society and a hot air ballooning society and a cook and bake society. Things that you might just do for just to have fun, just to relax, just to be interested in something different to your university life. And yeah, lots of different ways that you can enhance your social experience um, from living in halls, joining clubs and societies, playing sports, charity work and volunteering and community outreach. Um, at Loughborough, we raise over a million pounds every year for charity. It's an amazing thing to be part of, looks good on your CV. If you want to study abroad as well, can your university provide that as part of your course, a chance to go and study in a different country? And I'm gonna pass over to Sarah, that's enough of my voice. Sarah's gonna tell you the fun stuff that she's been involved in, how she's found studying in the UK. So yeah, Sarah, over to you. Can I grab a remote control? Uh, yes. Cool, cool. Okay, so um, you might recognize some people on the screen, you might not. That's Jade and Carmen and Jenny, all of which were at class um, around when the t during the time that I was there. Um, I think during my year, around six of us went to Loughborough um, to study, all of us doing different courses, but we still keep in touch. Um, how do I go back? Oh, I went forward instead. Sorry. I'm just going to talk a little bit about how or what I was thinking when I was choosing Loughborough. I'll go back to this pyramid thing. Um, when I was deciding on my course, um, the career fairs that the uni, uh, sorry, not the, the, that class, um, um, put together were really helpful for me, seeing all of the uni representatives in person, getting to talk to them and ask them some questions. Like that really helped me gauge what kind of university they were, what kind of courses they offered, and also kind of like what kind of people I'd be expecting to meet when I go there. Um, obviously, it's a bit different now, but still important all the same. I mean, um, Ms. Shaza has been um, organizing these online lecture series, and I think they're really important. Like being able to ask universities questions in a time when you wouldn't be able to travel over here to be able to ask these questions yourself. I think it's quite important um, that you get to know the universities a bit more before you look because a website isn't going to tell you everything. Um, I, during year 12, um, I had wanted to do medicine. Um, so my entire like process during year 12 was looking into UK CAT and like figuring out what uni I wanted to go to, what kind of grades I wanted, how I was going to take biology beside all my A-levels because I didn't do it in GCSEs, um, only to change my mind. Um, towards the end of year 12, uh, I realized I didn't want to do medicine. Uh, that was more my parents' dream than mine. Um, and I realized I wanted to do psychology. So I went online, had a look at all the different types of psychology courses, because you'll find that you might want to do one thing, um, but loads of universities will offer like different iterations of it. So psychology, for example, has business psychology, sports psychology, social psychology, um, health psychology. There are so many different types, depending on what you want to do. I chose social, social psychology uh, because I thought it was cool. I was interested in conversation analysis. Um, I really liked the modules that most of the courses had in common. Um, so that was the main thing that I was looking for when I was looking at what university I wanted to attend, whether they offered social psychology, um, but also I looked at general psychology courses as well. In the end, I applied for Loughborough twice, <laughs> social psychology and psychology, um, Surrey, Goldsmith and UWE. Or no, is it UEA? Yeah, East Anglia. Um, I ended up getting Loughborough, so I didn't have to think about the other choices. Um, when I was thinking about campus versus city, um, it's probably a very personal uh, choice, but growing up in a city, I wanted something a little bit more quiet. I don't like walking, I hate walking, but if I, if I could cut down walking time and I didn't have to take the tube, 
I would have been happy. So I chose a campus a university over a city university. I don't think I would have survived waking up half an hour to 45 minutes early, plus time to get ready. So that would be probably like an hour and a half before I'd have to leave, before I'd have to be at uni. And I don't think I would have been able to do that. An hour and a half before nine is, I can't do math, 7.30? I'm not a morning person, like Charlotte said. Um, so I ended up going to Loughborough. My accommodation was a five minute walk to my lectures. I woke up 20 minutes before my lectures uh, and always made it on time. So that was the highlight of my year and first year. Um, thinking about accommodation actually, um, when you're looking at your accommodation, also have a think about what the universities. Uh, process is for choosing universities, uh, sorry, choosing accommodation. Some universities will give you um, the choice to put your preferences down. Others will give you a session, like a date and a time for you to pick your, your accommodation and those goes, go quite fast. In the end, I didn't get the accommodation that I wanted, but I ended up meeting my best friends in Towers. Um, so I lived in Towers Hall. It was a catered accommodation seven days a week. I shared a shower and a toilet and a kitchen with six other girls. Um, and I thought I would hate it. I wanted an ensuite room. Um, I wanted I wanted Elvin Richards. Um, I ended up loving it. I didn't have a problem with sharing a shower and toilet like I thought I would. And all the girls that I was living with were amazing. They were really nice. We had a lot of fun first year. Um, so yeah, just think about that. Like you might think that ensuite accommodation self-catered is the best for you, but like if you like, especially during COVID, you want something that's you want an environment that's more social. You want to be able to make friends in the least taxing way. Like a comment, like um, your flatmates are going to be the easiest people to make friends with. You're going to be around them twenty four seven. It it's very straightforward. Um, well, unless you end up hating each other, then that's like another story. Um, so in terms of like type of teaching, um, that's really important to think about too. So some universities use PBL, which is problem based learning, even outside of medicine, um, like Manchester University, that's more hands on, it's more coursework based, you're given cases rather than coursework to work around. Um, or there's lecture, lecture based, which is what Loughborough is. So um, lectures, coursework, and exams. Um, and placements. Um, if you're thinking about doing a placement, um, you should apply for a placement course because that makes visas so much easier. You apply for a four year visa rather than a three year visa. And if you change your mind and you don't want to do a placement, it's so much easier to come off of a placement. Um, option rather than apply for one because you're going to have to apply for an extension for your visa, which is a whole other faff. Um, so my advice is to apply for a placement. Um, and a placement opportunity is really, really great anyway. Like I'm having the time of my life here. Um, I'm meeting so many different kinds of people. I get to do th like I get to do clinical work. Um, I get to work with children. Um, it's kind of everything I've ever wanted. And I'm living in London which uh, I will get to actually. Um, so yeah, uh, Loughborough is actually really big for graduate employment. We've got um, loads of uh, contacts during uh, the placement application period. Um, Loughborough sends out um, like, a, like a letter every week, a weekly like letter with all the placement opportunities that they've managed to get information on. Um, and they give you all the, the details you need. But if you find that you don't want any of the placements on the list, um, you can always go outside and find it yourself. So I'm gonna go back to the pictures of my uni experience. These are mostly from my first and second year. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Right, so um, in my second year, my first and second year, I joined Touch Rugby. Um, that was also a big thing that I was thinking about when I was applying for university, whether they had Touch Rugby. Um, I started playing it during sixth form. 
um, and I continued to play it at university. I still play it a little bit now in London. Um, on the top is the socials. So with clubs and societies and sports and stuff, not only do you get to play sports or dance or um, do like dramas and stuff, you have socials. So you'll have a committee who will organize like nights out, um, just hangouts. Like we had a taco night we just went out over to like one other girl's house and we had enchiladas and tacos and stuff. And it was like, it was really, really fun. That's another way of making friends. You can bond over things that you all have in common. Um, yeah, it was, it's really, really fun. I've made a lot of friends through touch rugby. On the left, top-ish, you'll see um, a lot of people in, in purple sweatshirts. Um, I joined the LGBT association at the university. We've got one of the biggest factions in the UK. Uh, we do a lot of um, events and stuff. And um, that was a lot of fun. It looked really, really good on my CV. Um, I made a lot of friends. You meet a lot of different people at uni. Um, you hear a lot of stories and it was just all around a really, really great opportunity on the side on the like middle you'll see um, a picture of me dressed as a football player I went to a uh, drag ball that year um, I managed to convince my flatmates to come with me um, that's my boyfriend on the top left dressed as an old lady um, it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit um, unorthodox like going to university you can do a lot of things but in Malaysia especially, you wouldn't really be able to get away with. But university is all about having fun and doing things that you wouldn't usually do. Um, and it was such a night, like, it was so much fun. It was just laughs and, yeah. I also went through a pink hair phase. Uh, I, I don't know what happened there. Um, and on the bottom left, you'll see a picture of me modeling. That was for someone's final year project. Um, what you'll find is that students will outsource other students to partake in their own like projects and stuff. So you have loads of opportunities to do that kind of thing if you are ever curious about it. So modeling and stuff was quite fun as well in my first year. Um, I also had a part-time job, many trips to A&E. <laughs> Um, midnight trips to a &E with your friends, uh, would not recommend, uh, but great memories. Um, I also still keep in touch with my class friends. On the bottom right, you'll see um, we had a Zoom meeting, a, a Zoom call during lockdown just to see each other. It was very nice. Um, I still keep in contact with my class friends, but I've also made loads of friends at uni. So like, if you're worried about that, like I don't think you ever have to compromise on that front. My fr like one of our friends is in Canada, um, another, but everyone else is in the UK. Um, but we still talk and it's a lot of fun. Um, I also got a part-time job while I was in Loughborough. Um, a lot of people might not suggest doing that, especially, especially um, well, when I went to uni, like especially with our fees and stuff, my parents thought it would be better if I focused on uni uh, but I found that I really wanted to do it like have something else to do on the weekends um, so I worked at a restaurant in Loughborough on the bottom left those are my colleagues from work um, we went out on a little social that was really fun um, it snowed once for a day in Loughborough last year uh, for very short actually for like maybe 45 minutes and then it stopped raining it uh, stopped snowing and it started raining so but I enjoyed the snow while it lasted. Um, there's Halloween and then there's um, your balls. I don't know what it's like now because of COVID, but during my first year, our halls held like winter balls and summer balls. Those were quite fun. You get to dress up, uh, go out, get drunk, um, have a lot of food. Um, and yeah, um, it's just a lot to think about. I mean, the kind of social life you want the kind of academic life you want that's all pretty much up to you and what you want to do with it um everyone will have a different um experience like charlotte said but it's all it all depends on what you go out and look for what kind of um societies and clubs and stuff and activities that you go out and and join it's all about being proactive about that kind of thing like these things aren't going to come to you um but it's so worth it 
I think university is, is such a, a worthy experience. Like I've enjoyed it so, so much. And now I'm on placement. Um, I'm living in London. I still see some of my friends from uni, um, but because of COVID and stuff, obviously I haven't been able to see them um, as often. Um, but it's kind of nice, the change in scenery, but like Charlotte said, I don't think I'd be able to live here um, on the full time. I think once I, I'm, I'm really missing Loughborough, I miss the small town, I miss being able to go to the shops within 10 minutes walking rather than paying to take the tube. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really know what else to talk about. I think I've covered most of it. Charlotte, do you have anything to add? <laughs> I was just trying to figure out how to unmute myself. I couldn't make my mouse work. And I just realized it had gone to sleep while you were talking. I was like, it's not working. I <laughs> know um, that was really useful. I think it's really interesting to me to hear how different students have got involved in different things. And I think that is what makes university so great, no matter what you're interested in. When you go to university, you'll develop that, you'll find new interests, meet new people, try new things. And that is what makes university so great um so yeah i'm going to give you a very 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 quick introduction to loughborough and then if you have any questions that you want to ask me sarah please pop them either in the chat box as i just do this little introduction or feel free to turn your mics and cameras on if you want to and we can have a little chat about what it's like to be a student um but yeah loughborough if you're not familiar loughborough's top 10 in all of the uk league tables as i said we're campus based um, we're very famous for our teaching excellence and our student experience. We focus a lot of our time and investment on the student experience, student journey of what the university does. Loughborough, a lot of students might have heard of us, but they might not necessarily know where we are on a map. Um, Loughborough is pretty much bang in the middle of the UK. Um, 10 minutes from Leicester and on the train is our nearest big city, 20 minutes from Nottingham an hour and 10 minutes on the train into London. Super easy to get anywhere, cheap because we're a town in the Midlands. And although we're a town, it is a big town, lots of, lots of stuff going on, social life, shops, restaurants, markets, cinemas, escape rooms, everything you need. And then you can get out and about if you want to. I mentioned top 10 in all UK league tables. The whole point of today's presentation is to get you to think about things that aren't league tables. But it's always worth saying it's a really nice time to be at Loughborough. Um, we have been in the top 10 for the last five years, I think, um, before that consistently in the top 15. So we're doing really, really well, which is great. We teach a whole range of different programmes. Loughborough's history is in science and engineering, which we've taught for over 120 years. Um, so we've got our big schools of different schools of engineering, sciences, sports and exercise and health sciences and also the social sciences and humanities business and economics and a big art and design school as well as we said we put a lot of focus on including careers and employability during your degree um, and every single one of our courses offers the work placement year We've talked a lot about the university campus and how that being why we chose it. This is what the campus looks like from one angle. I like this picture because it makes it look very green. You can see the greenery behind the campus um, and you can, if you're interested in hiking, I say hiking, Loughborough's pretty flat, not particularly hilly at all. Um, you can walk for hours, it's absolutely gorgeous. But if we spun this round and took the photo from the other angle, you'd look towards the town center. So it's a lot more urbanized from that direction. Um, but yeah, campus is amazing. Lots of sports fields, lots of accommodation, um, lots of available space for students. And we have strong links with Malaysia as well. We have about 100 students coming from Malaysia to study with us. And um, we have a Malaysian and Singaporean society as well. Um, so lots of things for Malaysian students in particular to get involved with. If you like what you hear about Loughborough or you want to find out more about social experience at any other university, there's kind of three different focuses for you to look at. You've got your formal channels of research. So UCAS, the university websites, prospectuses, the more marketing materials, I'd say. 
uh, which give you a really good idea. They give you the facts um, and they, they are a nice way to start your research. There's also a lot of comparison available out there. Um, and a lot of the comparison of UK universities is student led. Um, so there's a lot of surveys out there from the National Student Survey, for example, the What Uni Awards, um, which ask students for their experience. They rank universities based on their accommodation or based on different aspects. Um, and a lot of student reviews for you to read as well. I think the same thing with reviews of anything. Remember, students can be very passionate if they've had a bad experience. Don't always, you know, one bad, every university is gonna have one bad review somewhere from one student that's had a bad day. Uh, but it does give you an idea. If everyone's saying the same thing, might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Um, so have a look at those um, and then I think the easiest way to find out is to look at the more personable approaches um, so look at social media start following the social media of the universities that you're thinking of it'll give you a way to see what campus looks like they often do and they're often focused at current students so they're less kind of promotional than um, perhaps the websites, and it will show you what's going on on campus that week, how they're reacting to COVID at the moment, what students can get involved with, what they're doing. Um, take advantage to speak to students, like you've got Sarah here today, chat to student ambassadors at universities, chat to people you know who have gone to universities in the year above you, take their advice, remember your experience will be different, but think about what they say. And take advantage of this year, everything being virtual, having the opportunity to do virtual open days, virtual tours, panel discussions with students and academics, webinars and taster lectures. For the first time this year, there is an absolute plethora of information available for international students as well. So whilst no one can go and visit campus like a UK student would, and some students can travel for that in previous years, everything's virtual. The universities are working so hard to put everything online, really take advantage of that. Um, and also keep in touch with me. If you like Loughborough, that's my email address. If ever I can help, drop me an email. If you want advice, Loughborough UK, anything I'm always happy to help I'm always happy to book a one-to-one -one slot with you um, to talk through your options help with applications do the same with any university there's an international officer at every single university that will be here to help you use us this is our job this is what we're here for never feel like you can't ask us any questions um, and if you want to register for some more information if you scan the QR code on there that will sign you up for um, the kind of mailing list which will hopefully not spam you I really hope it doesn't but I hope it gives you information about when we're running panels when we're running events um, that you can join um, so if you'd like to do that that would be great um, but I'm getting a few questions in the chat box um, I'll also leave my email in the chat box if anyone wants to drop me an email I don't mind yeah or if you send that to me as well I can always pass them on um, if that's easy, I don't mind. So Sarah, first question in the chat box is about your placement. What are you doing for your placement? How are you liking it? And I guess you could talk a little bit about how you found your placement as well. Um, so I am a honorary assistant psychologist at the University College London Hospital, which is located in Euston, which is central London. Um, I really really like it I mostly do admin work for this clinical psychologist there but I also get to sit in on their clinical MDTs which is where they discuss cases and patients I am um, also encouraged to offer my own opinion we use a different kind of therapeutic model than most psychological um, teams we use narrative therapy which is a lot more um, client-based um, story-based it's it's really really interesting um, the team has been very, very like encouraging about me learning more about the kind of therapeutic models they use. And I get to um, participate in trainings as well. Um, everything is, they're like very, very, very enthusiastic about me learning as much as I can from this placement. Um, I was very, very lucky to get this placement. It's an NHS placement, which makes it really, really good for my CV. Um, and um, yeah, I, I love it. It's, it's so much fun. Um, everyone there is amazing. They're really, really nice. And I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
How did you um, find applying for placement? Was that quite daunting? Yeah, to be honest, like it, it's really, really weird, especially as an international student competing against local local students in the UK. It's a bit like, even though I'm sure they don't, they don't do that. It, it, there was a fear that I would be like, so sort of judged because I was an international student and put aside um, because I was an international student, um, but that didn't happen. Um, the, the way I found my placement, um, the university sends out, like I said, a newsletter. Um, so you, each course has their own placement officer who, whose main job is to basically support students in finding and applying the, for placement. Um, and they still send out a newsletter every Friday with all the placement opportunities that they've gathered for the week. We've got like Tesla who comes to campus to talk about their placements, like really big companies will come down and they'll, they, they contact the university and they offer their placements to us. Um, and yeah, like the range of placements that you can, you can get on are huge. Like we had an army placement um, that was research-based, um, re a research into like the psychological state of um, army personnel, uh, women. Um, but yeah, I applied for quite a few placements. Um, I mostly focused on NHS placements um, and I got UCLA. Uh, so yeah, that was quite um, lucky, I think. And also um, the fact that it was still running despite COVID was quite lucky as well. Yeah, you did amazingly well. You've got a fantastic placement. Um, so yeah, you should be very proud of yourself. Um, we have another question come in about, can you tell us a little bit more about the course you're studying and how you find studying at university, I guess? Sure. Um, so I study social psychology. It's, um, it's, a, it's a, a faction of psychology. It's more to do with interaction, um, behavior between people rather than an individual. Um, conversation analysis, so looking into different um, intonations, um, pauses, tone, um, even like the speed at which you talk um, is, is analyzed in social psychology. Uh, I worked with really cool lecturers. Um, one of them is Child on, Charles Antoki, who's quite a um, famous uh, psychologist. He's written a lot of papers, um, as well as Daniel Ryan, who's a big, um, a big researcher in the um, world of sports uh, safeguarding, which I thought was really, really cool coming from a sports background, like I was really, really interested. Um, and if you approach your lecturers and ask them if you can get involved in their final year students projects as um, to get experience, or if you're just genuinely interested, they're, they're more than happy to let you, let you um, like jump on and um, shadow their final year students. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. I did that in first year. I met a really, a really cool final year student who was doing um, analysis on the differences between male coaches te coaching male sports men and um, male coaches coaching female sports women and the other way around. So female coaches, male sports men, female coaches, female. Yeah, so that was a, a pretty cool study. Um, that I've managed to get involved in. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's my biggest tip to students. If, when you're studying at university, is get to know people, get involved. The more you put into university, the more you speak to people and ask for opportunities and network, the more you'll get out of it. Um, if you get to know your lecturers, they'll involve you in these opportunities. When I was a student, I we were launching a single honours history degree and I, I knew my personal tutor really well. I'd made that effort to get to know him, to participate in lectures. And he came to me and said, would you like a research project to research what the best history degree would be? Um, it's a paid opportunity. And I earned about £2,000 doing this research project. Um, we went out and spoke to 150 different schools across the UK. We spoke to alumni. We spoke to employers. We spoke to academics. Um, I got paid for it. And it ended up being my dissertation project as well. So kind of it was started off ex extracurricularly and then I wrote my dissertation on it. Um, but that looked amazing on my CV. I got involved in all sorts of different things. So yeah, the more you put in, the more you'll get out of it. Um, um, 
can we explain about how the student union works in UK universities and what the students, how the students can benefit from it? Um, yeah, I think we can do that together. So student unions vary upon different universities. Some universities have very active student unions. Loughborough does. We have one of the biggest in the UK. And they are normally, not always, but normally run by the students independently to the student body and to the, uh, sorry, independently to the university. So run by the student body for the student body, elected um, sabbatical officers who run the different sections, mostly student led, not always, some are part of the university, but mostly separate. And Sarah, do you want to talk a little bit about the different sections within Loughborough Student Union? Yeah, so we've got loads of, um, they're all student run, but we've got different sections, different students in charge of different things. So you've got the welfare, well, welfare and diversity section. Sorry, I completely forgot what it's called for a second there. That's to do with um, disability support, um, ethnic minority support, international student support, um, LGBT support, um, mature student support so that all falls under welfare and diversity it's being run by my friend Alex Marlow this year um, he's a really great guy um, but his job mainly is to make sure that students are being protected and they're not being prejudiced based on their race um, based on their age based on their disability based on their sexuality so that's their main job then you've got the action um, sector which is all um, volunteering so that's run by my friend Jody. Um, she Basically, her job is to organize student run volunteering opportunities. So things like soup kitchen for the homeless in Loughborough, um, dog walking for the kennels in Loughborough, um, gardening for the old folks in Loughborough. Um, there's also a daycare. So you help out with the daycare on campus um, where um, usually lecturers and staff on campus send their kids for, um, for the day. Um, loads of opportunities, looks great on your CV. You gain points for every volunteering, for every hour of volunteering you do, and you get little um, like paraphernalia <laughs> for um, if you hit like a certain number of um, hours, things like mugs and pint glasses and umbrellas, sweatshirts. Um, they're really cool, uh, the paraphernalia. <laughs> uh, then there is um, RAG was the fundraising sector of Loughborough. Um, as Charlotte said, they raise over a billion, a million pounds every year. Um, they do things like hikes up to Machu Picchu. Is that what that's called? Um, so yeah, you raise money to go on these trips and you like, you can go hiking, you can go um, for volunteering opportunities in like Thailand. Um, yeah, so that, that's RAG. Then there's the, um, Oh God, I can't remember all the sectors. Um, there's sports, um, they, they, they take care of AU as well as non-AU sports. So AU is the athletic union, which is like the, the inter-uni uh, body, I guess. And then there's the IMS, which is between halls. And then there's just the ones that are for fun. Um, so they take care of students who get involved in sports. Then there's societies and clubs, which is pretty much anything and everything. You've got ice skating, You've got Taekwondo, you've got um, baking, cocktail making, theater, um, loads, of, loads of opportunities. And so that sector basically takes care of that and they make sure that the, no one's being mis mistreated or anything like that. Um, then there is the peer support sect, which is run by students. And so they offer advice and um, support to students who have any um, academic um, issues. So yeah, I, I'm not sure if I'm missing it. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think the academic one you talked about at the end, um, that has permanent members of staff as well who so support students if you, you have any issues. So for example, um, if you have extenuating circumstances around your exams or coursework, um, but also representation. So that's the other one we haven't talked about as much is democracy and representation. A lot of the student union leads on student voice, students reporting back to the university. Um, so each course has a programme representative for each year and then a department president. Um, 
slight nerd alert I was president of my department in my final year really great thing to get involved with you get to represent the views of your students find out what they like and they don't like about their course and go back to the academics every six weeks we met with our academic team and said this is what's working this is what's not working this is what we want and they were brilliant at making the difference you could see how the course was improving consistently um, and that was brilliant. When I was president, we got to sit on the University Council and Senate, which is the massive decision making body. All the vice chancellors were there, the pro vice chancellors, the important people, and me as a student. Um, but they do listen. The university really cares about what the students think. And that, again, looks incredible on a CV. Um, but everything is run by students. They're listening to what the students want. Um, so, yeah. Definitely, that's, uh, you guys make me remember my time as a student in the UK. So I was at Huddersfield for my master's. So I was a part of the student union as an academic rep for my master's student. So that was, like you said, a really good experience to actually like talk to students and find out what they liked about the course. And then go back with the university, with the professor to actually tell them. And they, like you said, they really do want to listen to students' voice. So that was a really, really good experience. Uh, so I think that is all the questions that we have so far. If anybody else has any questions, feel free to just send them in the chat. But if not, I think that was a really, really good presentation, uh, Sarah and Charlotte. I'm sure they learned a lot about what to consider and the things that are going to the whole student experience outside of the academic life. Uh, that's definitely an important part. I think for me personally, I really like the campus and accommodation part because like you, I am not a morning person. So I really like being able to like walk five minutes to campus. Uh, that was the highlight of my undergraduate life as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that should be it. Thank you everybody for joining us. And thank you, Charlotte and Sarah. If anybody has any questions about Loughborough, feel free to reach out to Charlotte straight, uh, directly. Uh, Sarah is also on our Instagram. So uh, if you guys have any questions, you can email her. She gave her email address. She's on our HE website as well. So you have her email and her Instagram as well if you need to contact her directly about her placement experience or her student life experience. But if not, yeah, thank you yeah. everybody. This morning. Yeah. This evening, I guess. And thank you for coming back and to share your experience. I'm sure the students learn a lot from it. So thank you everybody for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you.